Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, the big question is, can a single photo be better than an actual HDR shot? Let's talk about that. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, again, my Patreon supporters get a bonus video where I will edit the shot in real time and also give you some bonus advice tips and tricks. And I want to invite you to my live stream tomorrow 8 p.m. CEST. We will do another really cool live edit and of course review your amazing entries from the challenge of the week which I hold every week in my free Facebook group. Now let's get started here and this is about something called Viveza 3. That is a plugin that is part of Nick Collection by DxO and as you know I'm a super huge fan of of Nick Collection. I'm not paid by them, I'm not affiliated, but I really like what they do. Now you can use that plugin inside of Affinity Photo. That is absolutely an option. Personally, I don't choose to do that because Affinity Photo can occasionally crash on you when you use plugins. What I choose to do is to use it inside of Photolab, which is another amazing software also by DxO. Amy says, is the old free version still applicable and does it work with Affinity? As far as I know, it does, but to be honest, I would really shelf out the 100 bucks that Nick Collection costs. I think it's super worth the money. Wait for the sale because usually it's 150. Let's go over here to Photolab. And like I said, you can use it if you want to as a plugin in Affinity Photo. So this serves as a Affinity Photo tutorial in my book. If you disagree, let me know in the comments, but I'm going to do this video anyways. All right, so here we have the photo. Let's go here to customize real quick, just so we see our histogram. And you can see that in this photo, I have exposed it in a way where we still have enough light here in our shadow area. So it's not going to be too dark. And also the bright values are not super overexposed. So I know that I can recover the data that is in that area. Not really with Affinity Photo because Affinity Photo is really not very good at recovering highlights, but Photolab is and Viveza especially is. So let's check that out. Here is the button inside of, of uh, Photolab to click here and then to go to Viveza 3. And this will create a TIFF version of that and then we can edit the photo. So that takes a little while to load. I think it's almost done and there we go, we are inside. Now here is the magical part, the amazing part of Viveza 3. You can create control points. Let's talk a little bit about the interface. So on the right side, you can see here, these are global adjustments as it is telling you. On the left side, you have some presets that you can try out if you want to, to give you an idea. But the big power, the most important thing about Viveza 3 are the control points. That is what that software is actually about. If you have an older version, the control points work a little bit differently. Now the controls for the control point are here on the right side and they are a little bit improved too. Down here you can see you have the control points. I can pick one and then I click here and this will create the circle and I can grab that circle and make it bigger until a maximum amount. So it's not independent, like it's not unlimited the size you can get from that. But that's good because usually it is better to work with smaller circles here and then spread them out over the picture. Now, what is the important part here? What is the interesting part about these control points? When you see down here, I have created one and right next to that, I have this icon for the mask. I can show the mask. So let's click on that and this will give me this preview. Let's me zoom in here a little bit. This is guaranteed to blow your mind right now. You have a mask adjustment for luminance but you also have one for chrominance and chrominance means the color with luminance. I can select how much of that similar brightness or darkness should be included in my selection. So you can see that this very much changes the area that is selected. And with chrominance, I can decide how much 
of the similar color should be included or excluded. Now here is right away a point that I want to point out to you that is very important. And you can see here we have some finer details, but when I now adjust my chrominance, you can see if I go like this, I get this glowing or rather dark edge, this halo around that. And that is not good. And this is why it's so good to have these two separate sliders, because with that, I can go down here and adjust it in a way where I don't have that and my selection is super crisp do the areas that I actually want to affect here. So actually let's pull up a little bit the luminance because I don't want to affect the house too much and you can see how easy it is to create a really precise mask just with these two sliders. No selection brush needed at all. This is one of the powers here. Now that we have created that let's click here on the mask again so it's hidden and down here you can see we have now these adjustments and these adjustments are specific to that individual point here. And for example, I can now play around here and I can bring down the brightness. I can bring up the structure. I can bring up the contrast and you can already see how this is really giving me back my amazing clouds. And by moving this around, you can see I get different kind of effects and different kind of areas are affected by that. So after we have done that, what I'm going to do here is to hold my alt key on the keyboard and then drag this and you can see this has created a second point and this is what I mean. I now can simply copy these settings to different areas of my picture and just decide how much of a dark sky I want to have up here. And this is only affecting the sky. This is the beautiful part here. And already you can see that this is a huge difference. Here's the original and this is how much we have saved that sky. This is by the way, not the end. We will recover more of that sky. But first I want to go into the building. So let's make a new point here on the right side. Click on that. I have my point tool again. Click here in the middle and this time I want to go a little bit bigger. And as you can see, Again, I can click here on the mask and now I have these beautiful details and let's zoom in here again. Look at this. I can address the shadows, but I can also address the brighter areas individually. That is amazing. That is, if you think about it, if you grasp that concept is actually really mind blowing because that means you can individually adjust, for example, giving the brighter areas a warmer, touch a warmer look, more structure, for example, more details, and then fade the shadows out a little bit, desaturate them, maybe make it a little bit cooler in the shadows. There's so much possibilities here. And the important part here is also to work with these different control points, because as you can see here, the building has a lot of different little details and you can really decide what should be dark, what should be bright, what should be warm, what should be cool, all these kind of things. All right. Again, let's go down here to our settings. And for example, make the building brighter. Now I have this up here. I will play with this for a second. Let's give it some more structure. Give it some more contrast maybe. There we go. Um, saturation. Let's leave it like this. Let's see what the shadows actually also. I will leave it like that for now. Now look at this. This is important here. Um, right now I have the light in the middle of my building and that's if you like that might be cool, but look at this. I can grab this point. I can move it up here and say, I want to have the upper part of my building brighter because this is where the sky is and the lower part brighter. And of course I can also copy that point to spread the light over the building into different areas. I can also decide to go down here and have the building brighter, closer to the camera. So with this, this is what I mean by relighting. You can really design and decide where you want the viewer to look, how you want this, the light to spread through your scene and also make it as artificial or as natural as you desire. So this gives you amazing uh, capabilities uh, to be really artistic. So again, let's copy this up here into that area. Let's say I want to have that building rather bright. You can, of course, um, adjust that any way you want. You don't have to uh, do it as I'm doing it here. 
I will make this up here a little bit darker, maybe give it a little bit less structure. And also I can move it around over the surface to see where I like the effect best. So this is already pretty nice. Now let's go a little bit into details as I have promised. First of all, look at that amazing sharpness. I love my Sigma art lens. Wow, the detail and the structure that this lens is giving you is just mind blowing. All right, here we go. Let's make a point right here, right on that very nice, I think it's called a rosette stone window here. Now I want to have that brighter. So let's make this a little bit brighter. Let's brighten up the shadows also a little bit. And then let's see, I wanna maybe, oh, this was the structure by the way, this was not the shadow. Uh, yeah, let's give uh, the shadows, make them brighter. Maybe let's see, structure like this is not too bad. And then, yeah, look at that. Look at this. That is before, that is after. I can still move this around. I can still make this smaller if I want to. Um, let's go like this, for example. And then, for example, I can push this over here. Now, in that area here, I have to readjust it a little bit. Let's make this a bit brighter. And then let's see with the shadows. Maybe like this. And this is the point. This is really a situation where I think you know and you can feel that you can really get sucked into this and you can play around for hours on a picture to really adjust every detail in the way you want. And it's still fun. And you can be the designer of your artwork and really make it look like you desire it to look. So for example, this side window, you decide, hey, this is a detail that I want people to see and to know about. So let's make this brighter let's make it more visual right so let's also bring some more structure in here and then pump up the shadows that's maybe a little bit too much there we go maybe bring down the saturation a little bit because this is making it too bright there we go too colorful maybe also here a little bit less saturation like so there we go and you can see now that also I have made these windows here brighter just to make them vi more visible. And you can do this with the rest of the building if you want to. You can, like I said, go as detailed as you want or not. Let's also make the ground here a little bit brighter, um, like so, give it some more structure and contrast. And now, as you can see, we have a beautiful picture and still we can now go here to the global adjustments and give this, for example, overall a little bit more structure. And by the way, you can now go super artificial if you want to. For example, if I pump up here my structure, and this is what you often see in HDR, these super artificial over-processed pictures, but some people like that. If you enjoy that, go for it. I'm not the one holding you back, but as you can see here, I can put in a little bit more structure. I can play around a little bit with the brightness if I want to. Uh, what you can also do is here adjust the warmth and the red, green and blue channel. The hue can also be adjusted. But to be honest, I would not use uh, Viveza for this color adjustment because first of all, you can see here that this slider is pretty rough. I would rather use color effects for that because that is what it's made for. And my mind is blown again. I hope your mind is blown too. See you in my bonus video on Patreon and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you do, please let me know in the comments and also see you tomorrow in my live stream. See you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.